All right guys, Papa Pepper back once again. Today, we got day 50 of 50 days to understand the end times more accurately. Day 50, preparation. As we examine the events that are to come, we may be tempted to be fearful and worried. Still, we are often commanded by God not to fear. He has told you before, Matthew chapter 24, verse 25, so that you may be prepared. And this preparation should occur in a few different areas of your life. A prudent man foreseeth evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Proverbs 27, verse 12. Yes, I realize I have repeated my message, but so did God. Neither of us wants you to miss the point. Let's look at what is coming and properly prepare. The most important step in preparation is salvation. Hopefully, you've already been born again. But if not, you need to know and believe the following. For there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sinneth not. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 20. You're a sinner. We all are. Even telling one lie or stealing one thing makes you guilty in the same way that murdering only one person would make you a murderer. For the wages of sin is death. Romans chapter 6, verse 23a. What you've earned for your sin is punishment, and that punishment is death, both the physical death of your body and the spiritual death of your soul. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans chapter, chapter 6, verse 23b. Despite your sin and guilt, God still wants to forgive you. However, because he loves you, he will not force you. He only offers the forgiveness. You have to choose to receive it. Since we've all earned death for our sin, in order for God to forgive us, God needed to make a way to have us not guilty. For God will by no means clear the guilty. Exodus chapter 34 verse 7. In order to make you sin free and take away your guilt so he could forgive you, someone had to die in your place. Unfortunately, all men are sinners and their own, with their own sins to pay for. So we are helpless on our own. However, God took on flesh as Jesus Christ and lived a sin-free life. God, who cannot die, took on human flesh, which otherwise would sin, and provided in himself the Savior. If we repent and trust in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ as the only payment for our sins, then he will be our Lord and we can be forgiven. Once we're born again by trusting in him, we have accomplished the most important thing we could ever accomplish in this life. Once we are truly headed towards heaven upon our death, the only thing slowing down our arrival is our life. Any fear of death can now vanish. Concerning the persecution and potential death at the hands of the enemy that we'll be facing here as the last days come upon us, we can concentrate on, med we can concentrate on meditating on the following verses and perhaps even memorize them. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 116.15 And fear not them which can kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. Matthew chapter 10, verse 28 And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that can kill the body, and afterwards have no more that they can do. But I will forewarn you whom you shall fear. Fear him, which after he has killed, hath the power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Luke chapter 12, verses 4 to 5. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? 1 Corinthians 15, chapter, or chapter 15, verse 55. Technically, for believers, death is simply the last door that we must walk through before entering into paradise, where God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. There will be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. Revelation chapter 21, verse 4. I don't know about you, but that sounds awesome to me. Though life here is beautiful and enjoyable, it is still forever marred by sin. The effects of sin and the curse will not exist in heaven, it only takes death to get us there. Therefore, we need not fear men who can only destroy our body. The body will cease to exist anyway. 
As we reflect on the coming days and the troublous times ahead, we can make some decisions now that may help us live a little longer here and be used to the Lord a little more. After all, now is the only chance we have to invite people to join us in heaven, so a few extra years, months, or even days on earth could certainly be beneficial. We know that various plagues and famines are still to come, and then the mark of the beast as well, when no man might buy or sell, save he hath the mark. Revelation chapter 13, verse 17. Since we are also told that if any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in their forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God. Revelation chapter 14, verses 9b to 10a. We know that we should not be receiving such a mark. It is also worth contemplating that if God's wrath upon the entire earth has already started at this point, how could only those that worship the beast and his image receive his mark, be subjected to the wrath of God? I believe that those with the mark will not be raptured and henceforth uh, have to enter the day of the Lord, which begins after the exaltation of the Antichrist. If people are still worshiping the beast, obviously another besides the Lord is still being exalted. If we are here for such times, how can we ob obtain our daily nourishment when all transactions are delegated by a mark which we cannot and must not receive? The simplest and yet most complex method for accomplishing this is Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. This is God's prescribed method for answering the questions of what shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. If we seek him first and focus on the spiritual, then he'll take care of the physical. If we can believe that God once fed the entire nation of Israel with manna and used ravens to bring bread for Elijah, then we should be willing to believe that he can likewise provide for us when we seek him first. Also, since he forewarned us, we can foresee the evil ahead and prepare for it. If a person has their own garden, orchard, or farm animals, one's need to buy food will be decreased. Plants produce fruit and vegetables which contain seeds. These seeds can be replanted and grown into new plants, which will produce more fruits and vegetables. Animals can mate and produce more animals, which can either grow up and do likewise or be eaten. I know this sounds very simple, but it is true nonetheless. If we are to prepare for the days ahead, we may want to buy a water filter and have some emergency food rations. I'd recommend getting out of any debt you have incurred and finding a way to own some land. Without a patch of earth to grow food on or raise animals, your options may be more limited. In the end, no matter what, we will all end up dead. Some will pass peacefully and painlessly, while others die horrible deaths. And those who are still alive during the reign of Antichrist may have to suffer more than some others. Believers will be welcomed into paradise by the Lord, while those who reject Christ will perish eternally. Therefore, our own salvation and the salvations of others, the salvation of others, are to be the primary focus. For that is the only thing that'll last. So guys, thank you once again for joining me on this. Like I said, big subjects, but this is kind of the cusp of the whole matter. Be reconciled to God through the blood of Jesus Christ. Um, be set free from those eternal wages of sin and the lifestyle of sin here. Um, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Pop out.